All right, guys, so um, back on the baby bullet here, and here's where we are now with the, uh, with the project, okay? So the next parts we're gonna work on um, are, are really these two right here. Let me uh, get those out of the way there for a sec. Um, this, is, this is the nut. This is actually the, uh, um, I don't know, the lead screw nut, uh, or, or the nut that draws everything together. And it's made out of cast iron. And it fits in this little uh, nut carrier, is what I call it. And this little guy uh, actually fits on the rear end here and, and makes the actual kind of part of the bullet shape of the rear end of the vise. Okay, so we're gonna make that guy and we're gonna do the nut. Um, we'll probably start on the nut first, and um, just because um, that we have an interesting development is a viewer that has decided to uh, to help out and follow along sent me some parts that they made. Okay, so let's uh, let's take a look at some of this stuff. Um, anyway, this this comes to us from uh, Pete Ferguson, and he's in. Uh, uh, Ontario, Canada, or Windsor, Windsor, uh, Canada, and um, he made the uh, the the new lead screw. Okay, and you can see that. And we've gone to an Acme thread here, and uh, that's one of the small changes here that we have. And originally we were going to use this uh, this piece of Acme all thread and this nut here. Well, we're still going to use that. We're not going to use that. We're going to use Pete's very nice uh, lead screw that he made, which is pretty cool. Now, let me let me show you the other stuff that he sent along with that. Okay. Um, so he didn't know which way we were going to go. So what he did was he he made a bunch of stuff, and uh, he thought that uh, we. And this was the original plan here was to kind of make it like this, and insert this in here and pin it. And secure it that way, okay. And then you you kind of end up with the same thing here. So this is kind of what the the you know you can go either way depending on uh, uh, what you want to do uh, challenge wise, okay. And then uh, what he did here also is uh, with this one is he made some little uh, some little caps for these, okay, for the sliding handle, okay. So really, that I mean, there's a whole other assembly there that we can put together too if we want. We may we may end up with enough spare parts to put a put a second one together, but I think we're going to go with this one. This is very nice, and uh, he uh, he single pointed these threads, and they actually fit the uh, they fit the nut really nice. So uh, I'm pretty happy with that. That's a nice job, Pete. And so we're going to go with uh, with this handle here. Um, now. Da, 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 da. Okay, so let's see. There was, uh, and then he sent me some little uh, additional uh, pieces that he had fiddled around with too. So, uh, so now we may not use the cross handle because I really wanted to do that in a slightly different way. So uh, we're gonna. Looks like we're gonna have a a little little package of spare parts here. So hope, God, I hope that was in the in frame there. All right. So we're gonna go with that and. Um, Here's how we're uh, we're going to do this. Here is we're going to turn this shape basically, and th these are these are in the plans uh, on the blog site, and there's a link there where you can uh, go look at those plans. And um, we're going to insert this. We're going to modify this hex nut a little bit, and it's going to get inserted in here. And then we'll silver solder this, or or weld it, or whatever to secure it. And then uh, that'll form the nut. And then we'll make this piece here which is the nut carrier, which is the anti-rotation. Um, and this is actually, you know, when the vise tightens up, this is what you pull against here. So this is all kind of tied together. All right, so I think we're going to go in with this piece first. Um, or this piece. You know what? I don't know. You'll just have to uh, keep watching the video to see which one we work on. <laughs> all right, let's get cracking. All right, we're going to work on the uh, the lead screw here. So let's uh, extend this little puppy out here a little bit. Uh, I need three and something like that. Mm. 
Yeah, it's got some some jaw marks on it there. Let's see, hopefully, let's see if we can get this position so I can see it and you can see it. Oh, that's great. Uh, tip's a little loose there. Hmm. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, that's pretty damn close. I think I'm gonna call that pretty good because uh, w you know we're turning all that diameter off, so it doesn't have to be uh, super califragilistic uh, accurate there. All right. All right. Um, you know, I think I'm gonna move the camera a little bit for uh, uh, so we got a better shot here. All right. Ready here. If I put it in gear.
fine. All right, now we'll turn the uh, the first shoulder, which is um, two inch by fifty. And what is the diameter there? Seven forty. Pretty warm. I'm gonna let that cool off, and then uh, we'll take a uh, uh, finish pass on that. All right, I think we're ready for a finish pass here. Slow the feed rate down. A little bit of oily oil.
I need about three more pecks in there. <laughs> of course, I felt like I was close, but... to go about halfway here because um, I'm going to bore it from the other end uh, uh, for clearance. But I'm just going to go into the end of the flutes here which should be plenty deep. put the uh, uh, the modified uh, Acme nut in there it'll just uh, slip in there and we'll just silver solder it in there or, uh, or um, braze it in set up for the other side. Now I put this chuck in the big four jaw and the reason is is my big four jaw doesn't close down small enough to uh, to get onto uh, uh, that diameter there which is a little less than three quarters. So let's uh, let's face this end off. Start with that. going to measure the flange thickness here. All right, so we need another uh, 26 thousandths off of that. I'm just going to take it off and uh, well. take it off in two wax.
we got a back bore that um, down a down a little way. So you know, for what? Yeah, I think I'll just use a boring bar. Um, well, I don't know. That's a long ways. I gotta gotta reach 1.8 inches, and that's not a real big hole. Uh, let me think about that for a sec. Uh, I decided to use the boring bar, so we're just gonna touch off. this and this barely fits this might squeal a little bit all right well let's give it a try see how it behaves oh, that's not bad this will produce a straighter bore and uh, it'll just be nicer Yeah, right. cleaned up there take another little short pass there ten thousandths and uh, if I can get a measurement get started there I'm just gonna do this with calipers this isn't a precision diameter here what do we got? Four, nine, seven. Okay. Go with that. Alright. And let's give this a little liquid love down there. In a minute. Alright, let's get a measurement. It's a little itty bitty telescopers. Right. What do we got here? Should be around 525. 524 and a half. Okay, I'm pretty, pretty down with that, so, alright, let's go, uh, I think we're going for a uh, finish pass at this point. Oh, can you guys see there? Eh, not really. Actually, I'm going to swing the camera around so you can kind of see this going, uh, going in for the first, or for the final pass. Alright, let's go for it. Yeah, 
Looking for 530. Get 531. 530 and 9 tenths. Yeah, okay. All right, perfect. Um, okay. Uh, let's see, let me chamfer that and then uh, we'll get that out of the lathe and then we get a little bit of mill work on this. All right, so here's this uh, Acme nut. And uh, what I want to do is, is turn the OD of this down to fit the, um, the carrier that we just made. <clears throat> Um, but what I want to do is, since I'm going to be turning this down, what I want is I want to do it in reference to this kind of th kind of the thread axis. So I'm going to here's another use for uh, gauge pins. I'm just going to stuff one down in there, and I'm going to use that to uh, to indicate on. Let's make sure I get enough sticking out here. Okay, so we're going to turn one half. To one diameter and the other half to another diameter to fit that <coughs> carrier. So now I got something I can indicate on that uh, that gets me that gets me pretty close. And um, so that uh, you know everything's kind of on center nicely. All right, let's see what it looks like here. Actually, I may want to use a. Uh, different tip on this. Let's see what we got here. This will probably work. Yeah, let's try that. Alright. So that's that a little bit. Let's see if we mess around with that if it changes it. Yeah, 6,000, something like that. It, the danger is, is this wiggles a little bit here, right? Let me shove it in there and see if I can... That's better. What is that? That's... Uh, about four. Something like that. Um, hey, you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and dial it in on that. Um, you know, I'm referencing quite a few threads there, so, um, so we're just going to make some little adjustments here and see if we can uh, dial that in a little, a little better. All right, I like that better. All right, so I'm gonna go with that. Let's take this little out, okay, yeah. All right, now we're gonna turn that down to a uh, half inch. Facing cut there. Skim that end a little bit. Actually, putting a witness mark on there. So you guys can see it. All right, 529. Then I, I was trying to set it so you guys could uh, see it, but then I didn't have confidence in the number. So.
Okay, so it should clean up right, right to the flats there. All right, so let's go right to our number. Still showing some little flats there. All right, looks like we're still a little big, but that's okay. I'd rather be uh, have something to take off than uh, have to put some back, eh? Oh, a flat that I'm working with. I need to gotta be careful here. Well, according to that. It's still slightly oversized, about a half a thou, and it's not going on, so I think I agree. Let's uh, take a whisker more off. I think I want about a little bit of clearance, actually, just so it goes together easy. Let's go with that. Because we're going to drop it down there and it's going to come up flush with that. So, all right. Now, what we can do is uh, turn this around and I think what I want to do is leave enough to, enough to indicate on there so that I'm kind of concentric with that. I'm going to get a test indicator to get in there, I think, so, okay. All right, it's a kind of wacky setup for uh, reaching into that little gap in there to indicate that. So I just use the indi uh, test indicator that has a much smaller stylus there to reach in there, okay? All right, so now we can turn this side and, uh, you know, we're, we're concentric or we're dialed in with that side, so let's do that. Okay, I can just probably just keep filming here, hopefully. Try not to hit the damn camera there. All right. Yep. You can see my numbers are good. So, um, well, I'm going to 
I'll take that out and let's let's try it. Okay, cross your fingers. Let's see. Go that way, right? All right. Looks like it's going. I need a need a pusher. But there we go. That's the idea. Okay, and that's that's now the nut. Um, so I'll probably uh, just I need an anti-rotation feature there, so I might use a little silicon bronze and go around that just to keep it from wanting to rotate. But uh, that's a instant nut there. Okay, let's go over and do the mill work. All right, so we. We're clamped up here in the V-block, and uh, so now we just need to center up. Let's uh, do our eyeball-centric here. See how we do. All right. Let's, let's try that. Yeah, I'm getting better at this. All right, that's pretty good. Six thousandths one way and two thousandths the other. Not bad for four jaw lame ski. <laughs> All right. Um, what we're going to do, so we got to poke a couple of holes through here. And what's interesting in this is that the, the holes, um, they're going to go through this flange, but they're going to come. There'll be half a hole, half in this wall and half out of this wall when we come through. So what I'm hoping, and we're going to go for it and try it, is that uh, we can just do it with the drill and we won't have to come back with the end mill. So this is, this is interesting enough. I'm going to zoom in and get up nice and close here um, so that we can see the, we'll see the first one and see how it works. <laughs> All right. That looks pretty good. Let's, let's try that. Our number is 370 off the center, and then uh, we'll uh, get a nice spot drill on it first. Turn all right. All right, let's see how this works here. It's not a real big drill. I'm using a stub here, so. Actually, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to zero my uh, my quill readout and I'll come back over. Alright, cross your fingers boys. Let's see what happens here. Starting to come through. Okay, I gotta go to uh, 430. Right. Looks like it's doing okay. The top's acting like a drill bushing.
So I'm just kind of being conservative here. All right, there's 400. Yeah, it's looking okay. Just got to go a little farther. And right about there. All right, that worked pretty good. That worked pretty good. Yeah, you can see it down there. It, uh, it just kind of ate half a hole. Okay, cool. All right, let's do the other one, and uh, then we'll cut some little pins for that. And uh, put this whole mess together. Okay, so this is a piece of uh, this welding filler rod, uh, 332 diameter. And um, I just went on the uh, deburring wheel and put kind of a, I don't know, kind of a slight drill point on it. And shoop, that slips in there nicely. So now what I want to do is nick that off, like so. And then, uh, so I'll file that so that it's flush. In fact, let's just do it. Take a little off of that little guy. Like so. <laughs> now I gotta not lose it, right? Like that. I get plenty of run. Darn it. I was all set to catch it. Ah. Well, that's one of those things, you know, sometimes you, uh, it's just, uh, it's just quicker to do another one, right? Instead of digging around and uh, trying to find another one. Hey, maybe a smart guy would, uh, while it, well, it's in this, eh? What do you think? I think that's what we're gonna do. Oh, there you go. And a real smart guy would do that so that it clamps it from <laughs> from moving. You know? Oh. No. I was thinking. <laughs> You know, I had the thought that I forgot to do the thickness on that, but uh, uh, I did do the thickness on that. All right. Okay, and then we're just going to hit that, uh, TIG weld that, and uh, it'll become a permanent assembly. Let me do the next one, and uh, then we'll, we'll do the welding, and we'll get this all done. All right, so there's the anti-rotation pins for this because this just slips into the nut carrier and uh, and this gives it actually it's kind of interesting it gives us a little bit of wiggle so uh, things don't bind up it's actually pretty clever all right so now we're going to insert our modified acme nut in here we're going to poke that down in there like so okay all right take that out all right and all right, let me clamp this, and then I'll get the welder fired up. Put some little uh, little tachosauruses on there, and uh, that part's done. Okay, little micro welds coming up here. Permanente. Let's do this now. Let's see if these. I think I'm going to use silicon bronze on this here. Let me grab a piece. 
just it's just lower temperature, so it's kind of nice that way. Could silver solder this too for guys that are more comfortable with that. Okay, let that cool off and then uh, I'll for the end a little bit and then uh, dress that weld and uh, Dunsky. Okay, so there it is all cleaned up. There's our little pins. There's the end. Yeah, a little, little, I didn't face it, you know, I went back and faced it a little bit, but I didn't want to take all the weld off, so I left a little, little show and gave it a little polish. There's our nut, our Acme nut brazed in. <clears throat> so, well, actually, let's, let's try Pete's uh, screw here. Okay, that looks good. All right, we got a lead screw there. Cool. Excellent. All right. Um, uh, that's interesting. Maybe. Uh, I wonder if this. Right. Ooh, yeah, it does go in there. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. See, and there's the anti-rotation feature. You see in here. It's got these little reliefs, these little reliefs, these anti-rotation reliefs. So, uh, um, so what that does is when you put the nut in there, like so, it it allows just a you know just a little bit of wobble on the nut and keeps things uh, running smooth and all that. And then you know when you tighten the vise, it pulls up into that into the tube and you're off to the races. Okay. All right. So there's the next piece we're gonna do. Nuts done. I call that good. Um, thanks for watching, guys.